Charles came to play tonight. And a steal. Miller retreats to the three-point line. Weber imploring the crowd. Jimmy Smith hitting the three. Come again. Big time plays here by Steve Smith. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another season of Open Court. We've got the band back together. Uh, we have All-Stars, we have Hall of Famers, we've got NBA champions, and just like we did last year, we throw out a few topics and these guys run with it. And, and let me introduce our esteemed panel. Uh, they really need no introduction. Uh, but there is uh, Shaquille O'Neal. Uh, get a good look at the tie. It's the only one you'll see on the show today. Hola, big fella. Um, next to him is uh, Steve Smith. You can, you can call him Smitty. Next to him is Reggie Miller. You must call him Hall of Famer Reggie Miller. Reggie Hoffa. Next to him is Kenny Smith. You can call him the Jet. This is Chris Weber. You can call him C. Webb. This is Steve Kerr. You can call him Steve Kerr. <laughs> <laughs> and there is Charles Barkley. <clears throat> you can call him Collect. Any question in your mind uh, who the best player in basketball is right now? Rich? No question, LeBron James. Is there any disagreement? Not even. I, Ernie, and I'll say this, I don't even think it's close. I think they're, uh, he's, he's better than everybody else. I think it's close. Uh, see, I, I think don't... it's close. Kevin Durant is knocking on the door. No, I, well, well, I don't think Kevin I Durant... I think it's close. No I, I, I don't think it's close because when I look at... Uh, we all, everything c compares to Michael Jordan. When I, and I said, you know, Patrick Ewing was great. Karl Malone was great. You know, guys like that, that you know, all these guys are great. But I said... Michael Jordan be better than these guys. And when I look at LeBron James, this guy's a walking triple-double. He's the most physically gifted, physically gifted. Because I said, I thought Michael Jordan had the perfect body. Like 6'6", 225, no body fat, could run like a deer and jump like a deer. LeBron James is three or four inches taller and weigh 40 pounds more. And I think if him and Michael Jordan win a foot race, it would be close. He can obviously jump like Michael Jordan. I think he is the most physically uh, gifted player we've ever had in the NBA. Okay, so if you're looking, uh -um. if you're looking ahead. Uh -um. oh. Say that again. I think that you were the most physically dominating guy. <laughs> gifted? I'm not gifted. Not, not, like not like Stop him. It. Not like him. Not like him. I've always, I've, I've told you this. We've never had a player. I mean, I never played against Will Chamberlain, who was just like, oh, he's just bigger, stronger. He's just too big for for one a person to handle. And I put you in that same category. But I'm talking about as a all-around basketball player, a guy who can guard anybody, who can get ten rebounds a night if he wanted to, who could get ten assists a night if he wanted to and can score 30 points. I don't think we've ever had a guy in the NBA like this guy. So, to the point, when you look at who the best player on the planet has been, and it, and it changes from time to time, and Michael at one point, and then before you're saying LeBron, I guess, maybe Kobe. At, at the, so now, who's gonna be the guy after LeBron who's the best player on the planet? Give me two or three you can look at. I don't need the top five, your top five, top five players. But who's the next well, best Kevin, player? Well, Kevin Durant is the next in line, but I think the next guy we haven't seen yet. He's still in college. He's still in high school somewhere, developing his skill set. Because the luxury that all of those guys have, even Michael Jordan, they Michael Jordan was able to see Dr. J. Kobe was able to see Michael. LeBron was able to see them all. So you, they, he's kind of taken things from all of those guys, magic and all those guys, and, he, and, they, and they encompassed it. So this guy who's in high school right now is sitting there watching LeBron James, and he's going to be saying, I could do those things. I can handle the ball like that. Or I could shoot like, because LeBron can't shoot like Kevin Durant. This kid is going to be able to shoot like Durant. We may, and have, we may already have seen him. He might be in New Orleans right now, Anthony Davis, you know, looking down the road. I mean, obviously the question you asked, Ernie, was, you know, originally right now, LeBron's by far the best. I think 
Kevin Durant's going to get better. I think that's what's exciting about him is that, you know, as he gets stronger, he's going to develop a post game. He'll get better defensively. But Davis, what we saw at Kentucky, number one pick, to me, he, he looks like Kevin Garnett defensively, but better because he's got longer arms, more of a shot blocker. Offensively, some of the stuff he did at, in his freshman year at Kentucky was remarkable. And when you try to project where that's going to be five years from now, he could be the best player in the game. Go ahead, C-Web. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's, that's interesting to hear. I'm, I'm kind of like Kenny. I don't think that player's here yet. You know, one thing about LeBron is wherever he is on the floor, he gets a double team. Wherever Chuck was on the floor, wherever Shaq was on the floor, and by him being a ball handler and being on the floor with that command is something. You know, what about the basketball IQ? Is there somebody in the game with that now? You know, watching LeBron, a lot of these kids are really learning, wow, once I get double team on this, to look for the guy in the corner. You know, I think he's a mix between Magic and Jordan, and I don't know if there's another player after Durant that's in line for that right now that we've seen. No, I, th I think it's Durant now. I think because we start looking at the competition he's playing against. It won't be the Michael Jordan and the Kobe Bryant competition, but I think as of right now, after LeBron, you got another 10 years of Kevin Durant, the way he's scoring the basketball, and I think the way he's starting to pay attention to details on defense. You have to put Kevin Durant the best on the planet because virtue of who he's playing against right now. And then Shaq, how long will LeBron be the best player on the planet? I think for about five, six, seven more years, or as long as he wants to. You know, when you talk about LeBron and you put him in a category of a Mike, those guys did it all. You know, like Chuck said, rebound, he can score, he's a great passer, <clears throat> a great leader. When you look at Durant, he, he can only do one thing, and he does it great. You know, he's a great scorer, so I'm going to have to go with uh, uh, a big man being the uh, uh, next best. I'm going to have to go with Blake, Blake Griffin. Because what he did in his second year was remarkable. Yes, he needs to work on his defense. Yes, he needs to work you on his shot. Best on but the planet, Blake Griffin? Best on the planet. I mean, because, you know, this is going to be his third year, and he does need to work on those things. And when LeBron first came in, you know, it took him four to five years for us to recognize him as a great player. Same thing with Kobe. Kobe's first two years, he wasn't the Kobe Bryant that he is now. So I'm going to give him, like, you know, two or three more years, and then I'm going to go with Blake Griffin. Well, I think the toughest part of being the best on the planet when you're the big guy is sometimes the game with 10 seconds to go and the ball is on the other end of the court and you got to get it from one end to the other and sometimes it doesn't get to you. Mm -hmm. Where with Jordan, with Kobe, with LeBron, he can get it from end to end. So to me, that's always going to make you the best player on the floor because at times you might not get it if we trap the guard in the backcourt. So to be the best on the planet, you could be the best, most. You could be the MVP. You could be the most dominant. But it's going to be tough to be the best on the planet because you can't get the ball all the time when the game's on the line when you're a big guy. So let's let me say this one thing though about this guy LeBron James. I ask that I always tell people I never thought that I would compare as great as I think Kobe Bryant has been. I never thought I would compare another player to Michael Jordan. But if we go back a little bit, we covered LeBron's first game on TNT. For that guy to come into the NBA at 18 years old, and he has really never missed a beat. To come into the NBA at 18, I look at all these great players we got here, we couldn't do what he did at 18. Even as great as Shaquille, he, he's the best player in this group here. I don't think he could have came into the NBA at 18 years old and dominated like LeBron did. I mean, I think LeBron almost had a triple-double that first game against Sacramento. And he's never missed a beat. From the day he came into the NBA at 18 years old, I actually think it's just amazing uh, the stuff that he's accomplished in this short period of time. Charles, well, Charles. Uh, I'm sorry, what's scary is listening to everyone up here, we're scratching to find another player that's the future or the greatest, and it's tough. Even when we all played against Michael Jordan, clearly Michael Jordan was the best player for that 12 or 13 run. But he didn't always win the MVP. Charles got it. Carl Malone got it a couple times. But it's interesting because, it, or maybe it's sad, it's hard to find who that next player is because is he really out there? Because looking down the road, to me, it's going to be a two-man race for the MVP for the next five or six years, mm -hmm. Kevin Durant or LeBron James. Ernie, it's, it's also interesting that nobody's brought up Dwight Howard's name, and I, I think he's 
kind of fallen off the map because of the injury and because of all the stuff that he put that franchise through in Orlando. But <laughs> that guy has the potential, if he comes back healthy, to be the, the biggest difference maker after LeBron in terms of just on the floor one game who can control the action and dominate the game. It's Dwight Howard, but he's fallen a long way the last year. Uh, I pose the question, do you guys think LeBron can surprise Michael at the end of the day? I think if he wins. And what? Uh, I, I think as the greatest it, ever. I think if, it depends on how many. asking the question. It depends on how many championship he wins, to right. be honest with you. Cause what if he wins six? If he wins six, you know, I, I always tell people, man, I, Michael Jordan, it was, it was an honor and pleasure to play against Michael Jordan. But I, I've never seen a guy like this guy right here. Uh, like LeBron? LeBron. If he wins six championships, yeah. uh, we're assuming he's going to win another see, four more MVPs well, and another I, four listen, more we, you know, finals we're sitting here MVPs. talking about this, this, That's what I'm this to me is going to be a great NBA season because the Steve Nash age thing, mm -hmm. the Dwight Howard back thing, that Laker team, if they can stay healthy, because they're going to be – imposing if they are healthy. Like I say, we don't, you don't never know how backs are right. going to react. Steve Nash is 40 years old. If they can be healthy, because the, the only way to beat Miami is to beat them up inside. You're not going to out-perimeter Miami. That's why I thought Oklahoma City couldn't beat them, because they're a perimeter team. The only way to beat the Miami Heat, they got a very small team, and you can dominate them down low. If Dwight Howard is healthy and Powell Gasol down low, the Lakers, to me, are the best team on paper. Still, Please. we're gonna. You gotta stand up for Michael on this. We hold it. We have. We have. I'll stand to, up if you want. We have got to. <laughs> we have got to take a break. We are gonna talk more about team wide in the in the course of this show. But that's kind of an unscientific look into the crystal ball. We do that well here on Open Court. Whatever happened to someone has to beat the champ. And right now, the Heat are the defending champions. Someone's going to have to beat them. Yeah, but we all talked for 20, we traded. All, we all talked for 20 minutes about you know, LeBron Kobe James got traded. being the best player on the planet. Yeah. How can you match up with the this guy? How it got now traded. He, now they're the third best team to possibly win the championship. Someone's going to have to beat Miami. Welcome back to Open Court. Uh, moments ago, Charles was talking about the uh, Los Angeles Lakers and the, uh, the changes they've made and uh, the improvements that they've made on that team. Um, the fascination with the NBA. We're coming off this lockout season. Now we got a full year ahead of us. We've got some storylines people are grabbing on. How much does Steve Nash have left, Steve Kerr? Oh, I think he's got enough left to, to make a huge impact this year. Steve is the best conditioned athlete I've ever seen in my life. Uh, he plays a game that is going to translate even as he gets older, a little bit like John Stockton, who was effective all the way till 40 years old. But the fact that he's going to be playing with Dwight Howard, who, which will really help him defensively in pick and roll situations, with Kobe, who he can, you know, throw the ball to at the end of games, with Gasol, who he's going to have a, a great rapport with uh, offensively. Uh, I think I think Nash and the Lakers are the most intriguing story of the year. We saw the Steve Nash Amari Stoudemire dynamic at work in Phoenix. What will the Steve Nash Dwight Howard dynamic look like in Los Angeles, Shaq? You know, one thing about Steve Nash is he's a master controller. So you know, he's going to control the game. He's going to control the tempo. He's definitely going to control the offense. Uh, Dwight is a pick and uh, pick and roll player. So, you know, he's going to get six to eight easy points just by coming out the pick and roll with Steve Nash. And like, uh, you know, Steve Kerr said, defense-wise and pick and roll, he's going to be there blocking shots. If they can stay healthy, like uh, uh, Chuck says, they have a shot. Um, is it Oklahoma City, L.A. Lakers, case closed for the West? Yes. <laughs> wow, you sounded just like Shaq. Yes, yes, yes I think it is. <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, they got to no, play the games. You know, I, I agree, like, uh, with, with Nash being at the Lakers, and we haven't even talked about Gasol. You got two players now that can post up. You pick and roll, and, you know, it just translates into Nash's game when he walks into that three down there. So I, I, I say it's the Lakers. I say if I'm OKC, I'm kind of panicked right now, thinking, wow, these guys have two beasts because you're going to free up Powell Gasol, too, and the defense, you know, a lot 
of people have played fake Matador defense with Dwight Howard by, back behind him. Nash is going to try, and, and Dwight Howard is going to be behind him. He'll be okay. You know, I, I say Pac Gasol is going to benefit the most. But I pose the question to Kobe this summer. Has he ever played with a, a guy that's going to dominate the basketball outside the triangle? Will he have to change his game? And you guys know his obvious answer was no. But it's going to be an adjustment for him because this is going to be more spot-ups unless he's going to get the basketball and tell Steve Nash to get out of the way. But uh, it's going to be an adjustment. It's an adjustment for me when I play with Mookie, being able to learn how to play without the basketball. So I, I think that's the one question I'm looking at, Kobe playing without the basketball and dominating it. But you talk about this, too, in watching your career. You love the one-two pick and roll. You always talk about it. You talked about it for OKC. So I look at, like, what, what's going to be positive out of this. Just think of Kobe being able to set a pick on Nash or vice versa on a two pick and roll and to be able to go down to the post now. So I just think, I, I, hear, I hear what you're saying, but I just think Kobe's going to find a way to eat extra off if of Kobe, Nash. If Kobe team. wants to tie Michael in championships, He's going to have to relinquish a little bit yeah, of that control. I agree. And Steve Nash is going to have to accept that challenge of running this Laker team because in pick and roll situation, and I agree with Shaq, I, I think Powell is going to be uh, the huge beneficiary of having Steve Nash on this team. That, that was me ready, not Shaq. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I should have known. Just, Steve, Steve, I have a question for you. Can the Lakers win running a regular offense? Because, you, you know, he has five, but he has five running the triangle. Right, right. And me and you know both, you know, we know how beneficial the triangle is. So, yeah. So my question is, can they win it running a regular offense? Well, I'm going to go back to what Steve Smith was talking about. You know, Kobe has to relinquish the ball, but also Steve Nash is going to be running an offense with two post players. And the only time in Phoenix that, that he had a post fan was when you were there for a year and a half. But the rest of the time... The floor was spread. He had free reign, high pick and roll, all kinds of room. There's not nearly as much room down there anymore. And so they're going to have a transition period for sure. I agree with Reggie. You know, Steve Nash is going to be shooting more spot up shots. He's not going to have the ball as much. Kobe, same thing. So they've got to figure this whole thing out. And they, they're going to run a new offense, too. They brought in Eddie Jordan. They've talked about running some of the Princeton stuff, which maybe it doesn't fit their personnel, so I, they're going to have well, to adapt that somehow. Did Princeton ever win a national championship? <laughs> but I don't know why everybody liked that offense. <laughs> I always take I, it. I always, every time I hear that, <laughs> never won a like, why would you? I run the Kentucky offense, <laughs> North Carolina, <laughs> UCLA. UCLA. Every, every time I hear that Princeton offense, I, I want my account up in Princeton, not basketball. <laughs> <laughs> I agree totally with you. I don't want no basketball from Princeton. I actually disagree with y'all on the Power Gasol team. I think Dwight Howard is going to benefit more playing with Steve Nash because Dwight Howard is the most athletic big man we have in the NBA. He's going to get up and down the court. He's really he's going to be playing the power forward position. He's going to get obviously he's playing the power forward position. Well, I think he's better. He, he's more comfortable because Paul is all a better post up player. Mm -hmm. But on the pick and roll with Dwight Howard and. I think he's going to get another 10 points a game on the fast break because not, not many big guys. How do you, when you put him in pick and roll, because he can't shoot the basketball, roll. he can only roll. Well, but roll no, he's, he's Blake Griffin. But that's why you throw the alley oops. He's going to be the getting minute. a lot of layup dunks because, listen, who would you rather have posting up? Pau Gasol instead of Dwight Howard. Mm -hmm. So instead of running the pick and roll with Pau, I would run my. my a lot of teams are going to pre rotate when you mm -hmm. put Dwight Howard in but that. That's yeah, but it's going gonna, 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 gonna to help Pau Gasol in that situation. Well, who's licking his chops the most, probably, is Russell Westbrook. You're like, y'all talking about all of this, but you got a guy now almost 40 trying to guard me on the and perimeter. That's, and there goes the problem. That, yeah. that's, and there that's, goes that's, the problem. That's, that's, that's my biggest that's concern the with Steve Nash. Because it used to be the power forward position, but I think now. The point guard is the toughest position in the NBA. You're playing against a terrific point guard every night. And a guy's 40, can he, first of all, he's, he wasn't a good defender when he was 30. He, 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 Steve Nash has never been a good defender. And now he's 40, and Steve says he's in great shape. He's in great shape for a 40-year-old. <laughs> you know, so, but, but playing the point guard every night in the NBA, I think that's going to be the biggest yeah. test for, for Steve Nash. Can he stay out of foul trouble? And also, are those other guys going to be in foul trouble all the time trying to help him? That, to me, is going to be the biggest question with the Lakers. One word answer here as we, as we continue to move. Lakers or Thunder win the West? 
One word. Thunder. Thunder. Spurs. <laughs> oh, man. Lakers. I'm pointing at Thunder. Chris, don't you answer, Shaq. Okay. Thunder. Thunder. <laughs> Lakers. Ernest, that's a fair, not a fair question. Oh, one word answer. One word answer. One word answer. One word answer. Yes. 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 One team. After you say your one, one word, word, you can no. say it in a break. Okay. One word. One, idiots. <laughs> <laughs> one word. Lakers. 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 Okay. Now, where does Miami fit in this whole equation? When you talk about NBA champions or you're talking about Eastern Conference champions, are the Lakers or the Thunder good enough to beat the Miami Heat? The Lakers, I mean, the, the Miami Heat, to me, honestly, has a chance to be the third best team in the NBA and still win it because... You know, you could get, it's all about matchups. And then all of a sudden you get to the finals and the Lakers aren't who they were. And the, the problem that the Lakers will always have is guys like Mario Chalmers, guys like Shane Battier might have big nights against them because those are still two positions that defensively a lot of times you can, you can get buckets at. So they could be the third best team throughout the whole regular season to me and still win it. What, whatever happened to someone has to beat the champ? And right now, the Heat are the defending champions. Someone's going to have to beat them. Yeah, but we all talk Michael Jordan 20, didn't get we traded. All, we all talked for 20 season. minutes about you know, LeBron Kobe James got traded. being the best player on the planet. Yeah. How can you match up with the this guy? Howard got now traded. He, now they're the third best team to possibly win the championship. Someone's going to have to beat Miami. And picking up Ray Allen and Rashard Lewis, two good guys to spread the floor so Dwayne Wade and LeBron James can operate, someone's going to have to beat Miami. Uh, you know, I picked the Thunder to win the West. It, obviously, if the Lakers have the better chance to beat the Heat because of Dwight's dominance. But I just think it's going to take a year for the Lakers to get a chance to win that championship. I have the Miami Heat still win the championship because if you don't have a dominant center, you're, you're not going to beat them. I'm going to go with Steve. Uh, Miami wins the championship. But if the Lakers make it, I think they can beat Miami. Ernie. I agree totally. I, I just agree totally. The Lakers should win it, but I think uh, OKC will get past them because of their system. But Miami, we saw them struggle when they had big guys inside, and so I think LeBron is that great to change the game. So wait, you're they saying mean, Lakers should win it, but OKC is going to win the West? Well, yeah, because this is what I'm, I'm saying. The same. The I, I'm just saying the Lakers mm -hmm. should win it, but I think they need a year to get better to to, to understand each other. Right. OKC still is coming off the momentum of last year, but I just think it's going to be so hard to beat that system of Miami. Now that they know who they are, got shooters in the corner like you said, with those guys running down. I, I don't know if hard. the Lakers have a year because of the age of Kobe and right. Nash. I don't yeah. know if they have much yeah. time to mess around. I do think Miami's going to be better this year. You think of the pressure on that team the last couple of years. Right. LeBron obviously made this huge breakthrough. The team now can, they're playing with house money. I think when you win the first championship, it's, it's easier after that. The monkey's off you your You think back. it's easier after the first one? I do. I think, I think, got a few. I think the, the first, once you win the first one, a there's, a yeah, deeper, there's a deeper level of confidence. I think, I, I think it's a deeper has. level of confidence, but I think overall, then you, I, I call it the fat catitis, where you have some guys who weren't stars all of a sudden become stars. And are they able to handle that? Like guys like uh, Shane Battier and Adonis Haslam all of a sudden going to have TV commercials. And will they, no, they're not. Will they work? <laughs> <laughs> will they work as hard? I like, so. Shane, no, you know what I mean? I, I, I'm just saying. You got some character guys, guys, though. You got to I, I'm just, hey, I, we had character guys, and we had some guys from every Hollywood why, it'll be walking easier. in with shades for the first time, cigars after. I'm like, well, you got a cigar. You don't even smoke. Oh, I don't light it. It's like, <laughs> what are you doing? Like, we had guys doing that after the first championship what, what was when they team? first got. Some fame. But you let's, guys let's want, go to, let's you go to, want a second one. Yeah. Uh, let me let's go to Clyde Chuck. Came in. Chuck will close Clyde it out. Come in it Ernie, the rap. only team that can beat the Miami Heat is the Los Angeles Lakers. Because you're not going to beat them shooting jumpers like Oklahoma City. Unless you have a big, two big, one big guy down low and they got the Lakers have two. You're not going to beat the Miami Heat unless you physically beat them up. I like them getting Ray Allen and Rashard Lewis. But they are the same as the white... Uh, Le LeBron and, and Dwayne, they're perimeter players. The only way to beat the Heat, you go back to the Dallas team. Dirk and Tyson Chandler beat them up down low. Sean Marion, that's how you beat the Heat. The Lakers are the only team. The, the, 
the Oklahoma City Thunder going to be exactly the same team if they get to the finals again. They're going to be perimeter oriented, and they're not going to beat the Miami Heat. The only team can beat the Lakers is the Lakers can beat the Heat. We're going to take a little break, get these uh, fat cats some stogies, <laughs> <Fat> shades. <laughs> <laughs> the discussion continues after like this. Five minutes, he got shades on. <laughs> I like accidental or coincidental super teams. I don't like, you know, super teams that are forced. When you're in the prime of your career, you can't say, hey, even though I'm with the Lakers, I want to go play with C-Web. You can't do that. I'm with wrong. That. We didn't do it. The guys before us didn't do it. Hey, we're back with more Open Court. Uh, when you look at the so-called super teams that have been constructed in the NBA, is that a good thing or a bad thing, Chris Weber? <sighs> oh, man. Wow. It depends on what era. You know, when Chuck, uh, I wanted Chuck to win the championship. When he got with uh, Clyde Drexler and Akeem as a fan, I thought it was awesome. When Shaq, you know, got with his guys when K. That wasn't a super team. Then. Yeah. But, but, it, but it was a super old team. The super old team. Hey, Chris, between, <laughs> hey, between, <laughs> hey, between, <laughs> hey, between, <laughs> hey, between, hey, between, hey, between, hey, between, me and between, me, between, me, Clyde, Akeem, almost passed out a couple times. It's just a different league, Jay, and I think it's something that I'm getting adjusted to. Because when I when I played, it was like, uh, you know, I didn't want to play with a certain guy. I wanted to try to beat him or lose against him. And so I think it could be good for the NBA. Um, but I think time is going to tell now that we've seen Miami. And, you know, it's good for certain teams, the Lakers. But I think it's hard to tell. But we grew up with super teams. I, I just think they weren't called that because the, the Boston Celtics with Bird. But it was through drafts, though. It wasn't it through right. drafts. Well, no, no, through, no, no. But it, no right. Mc, uh, Kevin McHale was a 6 Rob, Robert, draft. No, Robert Parrish was a trade from Golden State. Okay, so, but I mean, guys didn't get straight. together in the huddle and say, listen, right. call your agent. I'm going to call mine. Exactly. We all going to go together and let's recruit our but, boys. But, but there we wasn't free agency. It wasn't there wasn't free that agency was, that was free then. agency, man. Oh. It was not like listen, it was. You, yes. There wasn't free kidding. agency oh, like it was. It's 100 were, percent correct. No, you nobody, were restricted listen, free agents. The Lakers, the, your team had the right to sign you back and nobody was going to match listen, it. It was, it was collusion under the table that, by the owners at dude, that time. If you look at... We wouldn't take your if players. If you go back and look at the great... The Lakers? The Lakers made trade. That was a super team. Yeah, because they made good draft picks. Okay, but time out. You don't remember Matt Magic Johnson calling Bob McAdoo and saying, come play with us in the summer for less money. That's different. That's not different. That it's the same different. thing. But they come already had for less money. Three guys. Bob McAdoo no, led the league no, in scoring. It's not LeBron, he was coming off the bench. He it's not the, the best. He was the MVP of the league at one time. I think and now the, he's coming off the bench for the Lakers like he's a scrub. No, at the me? end of his career. It doesn't when, matter. When still these fall. guys who are trying to manipulate the system. It's not manipulation. Yes, it is. No, I'm a free agent. I will say this. Teams... Look, Orlando did not have to make the trade. Exactly. To the they made a super team. Look, I'm going to get Memphis in trouble didn't for have saying to this. Give the, question to them. Is, the question is, are these super teams good, good or, bad or bad for the league? Look, I'm probably going to take heat for this. The commissioner, I'm sure, likes it because ratings are going through the roof. Now that you've got Dwight Howard teamed with Kobe and Powell, you've got LeBron James, you've got Carmelo Anthony in a big market, you've got Derrick Rose in a big market. So it's good for ratings. Is it good for the league in a whole? No, I don't think so. Me playing 18 years in a small market, why doesn't Dwight Howard ever want to come to Indiana? It hurts the Milwaukee. But you're the, the only Hawks, superstar but, who actually played there. But, but why? Look, it's not good for the league. What no makes, one ever What done makes it. the NFL great is Aaron Rodgers, the best player, is in Green Bay. When LeBron James was with Cleveland, how many times did TNT and ESPN go to Cleveland? They were a max for out team a, in yeah, a that's small market. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, not, small market it's, it's not good as a whole for the smaller team markets. But uh, Oklahoma City made the NBA final last. Through the drafts. drafts. Through yeah, Sam drafts. Presti, through the draft, yeah. they are a good team. Those guys didn't, as we're saying, collusion and getting together and say, let's all go to Oklahoma City and play. I, I still, I, I don't think anything wrong with guys being a free agent, serving their team, and when their contract is up, 
they decide where they want to go and play and what city they want to be in. I'd rather live in certain cities than live in. Let me ask you a question. 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 But Kenny, I think what you're saying, the question is, is it bad for the league? No, it's not. It's always been. When I was growing up, the Lakers or the Celtics were going to win. Nobody else had a chance. Yeah, but they did it the right way, Kenny. Why is that right? It's not right. It's still a super team. I don't think. Listen. Red all back. Hey, no, those hey, guys did did anybody say anything like bad system. about Oklahoma City? They just, we're going to draft well. We don't Charles, want... it wasn't diluted either. We have 30 teams now. Yeah. But I'm saying, but guys Aaron, never is it got... a cop out for the players. Hey, listen, like, let's ask a real question. You know, is it a cop out for the players? Yeah, that's what. That, that's my is point. It a cop out? There's a lot of what prideful. Get, there's what a lot of prideful. Because he stayed in Indiana 18. There's a lot of prideful guys have to go through it. that are on this stage right here. It's easy to jump. Let me ask Shaq this. Would you have ever called Charles up and said, hey, come help me? Win a championship. I need you. That's basically what we're saying that no, these but, guys did. Okay, but, but, All right? But, 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 I would never have called Michael up and said, hey, can I come play okay, with you? Okay, but hold on. In the middle of his career, beginning of, it, of his career, no. At the end of his career, like I did, call Malone, yes. You know, and I have no problem with yeah, that. In the yes. career, I get that. In the career, no yes. At the, end like of the beginning of, at the beginning of the career, the middle of the career, when I'm trying to You want to, to be his head in. Exactly. exactly. You want to go against exactly. the best. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. First. That's exactly. the point. What's the difference? These, exactly. guys, these guys are in their prime teaming up. And I would never, I wanted, I wanted to beat but, Michael uh, Jordan. No, I don't want to team with him. You know, I don't care the beginning, middle, or end. It is a big difference. I'm going to just tell you. I'm going to tell you what everybody else did it. Just the difference between my opinion, you're talking to guys that, had to lead their team and it was on their back. So when I was in Sacramento, it was me or it was going to play with Tim Duncan. I felt at that time, no, I want to play against him and I want to win it without him. Now, that's a hell of a gamble because you didn't win it. Four but, more championships but, you would have been walking around with. That's right. No but question. It, that, that's right. But see, unlike you, it was my decision to say this is my team. And if I don't beat him, then the hell with it. But I made the decision. So I could have called and done that. And at times... When you get older, you may regret that. You may want a ring. I'm not saying it's great or it's honorable. All I'm saying is that I think you're looking at it from a different position. No, I'm looking at it from a different perspective. I'm saying that that's fine what you did, but it's also fine what they're doing because it's no difference with Charles career, is saying. Though, but we're talking about what's for the, the league. league. But what's the difference in uh, Charles in the, the prime of his career? career? What's the difference in him going, I don't want to play in Philly no more? I, I, what's the difference? Charles, no, There's I bet no difference in him leaving. But I don't want to play here no more. And then he gets to Phoenix with Kevin Johnson and rest of them. Like, there's no difference of you saying you want to leave and be But traded. who is them? Kevin Johnson was just an all-star. But he didn't know. He wasn't yeah. leaving. Right. But he, he didn't play with all the famous in that club. When he went to he didn't want we're to talking about Philly. people. If we're talking about no, people, but I, but, but, we're talking but, about but, people to play with I, all the famous. It was like right. seven teams trying to get me when I left Philly. I never said I want to go. I says, I want. I just need some help. I never said, no, nah, I want to go to Chicago or L.A. You need help. He got help. LeBron yeah, Wade said, I'm going to yeah. get help. No, he didn't, no, LeBron, it's it's not the same. LeBron went, went and helped. LeBron went yes. to the, yeah, I mean, LeBron went and helped. He didn't get help. He could have recruited people to it, Cleveland. It just seems like you, what you're saying, too, right. is that I wouldn't have. If you give if you give <laughs> a guy like the mailman a shot late in his career, his last chance right. is a different thing than having the face of two franchises, Chris Bosch and LeBron James, call the face of the franchise or, or team up with the face of the franchise in Miami and say, Guys, we're getting after back-to-back to to back yeah. MVPs, yeah. Ernie. So, and, and you leave home. You're the MVP. I said, I'm the MVP. I'm playing at home. I'm not leaving my home after I won back-to-back -back MVPs. You guys can come play with me. I'm leaving. And sometimes my... you got to buy a new house, man. Yeah. Like, look, I about, gave y'all seven, well, eight years. I, I look at this question. We weren't able to do it. Sayonara. I put my service in. Y'all tried to do it. It didn't work. I like the way you did it. I'm not saying, but I'm I agree more, with I you. Go I with your, I'm, I'm more like Could LeBron your have gotten Chris I'm more like to that. come to Cleveland? No. He's not going to come to really? Cleveland. No, he's not coming. Come on. He could have got Bosch to go to come Cleveland. On, man. Let me pose this question. He couldn't question. get anybody there in seven Jenny, years. Yeah, Jenny. Come on, man. He, in this era, though, if you're LeBron and D Wade, don't you agree that it's a similar type of players? Yes. You'd have never done it. Exactly. Oh, not in the same position. Big I'm not saying I'm not point from guard. that cloth, but I, I know, understand but what they did. There's nothing wrong with it. I understand what they did. No one says nothing wrong with it. We said it's a good thing. I want to go back to the original question. We got a little sidetracked here. Yes. Is, are the super teams good for the NBA? I say absolutely, because ratings are off the charts. When, when the best thing that happened to the NBA in the last five years is LeBron going to Miami. 
The, every every single talk show host, every radio show, mm -hmm. that's all they talk about. Ratings have skyrocketed, which means sponsorship money goes up, which means you know the, the, the TV packages for the league are all of a sudden more lucrative. The Lakers and the Celtics and the Bulls in the 80s and early 90s, best thing that happened to the NBA. Is it fair to Indiana? No. Is it fair to Milwaukee? No. They're at a huge disadvantage. But the, the reality is the NBA is not the NFL. You can't have uh, great NBA teams... Why not? Up. Yeah, because so there's only about 10 guys in the whole all, league who make a oh, difference. First of all, Steve, hold, tell let me, hold on for a second. First of all, you're wrong. Uh, let me tell you why. The Pistons won two championships. The Rockets won two. The Spurs won four. The Bulls won six. Yeah. The Celtics won a lot. The Lakers won a lot. So it ain't like it's been one or two teams winning. There's been plenty of teams. Think about here, that. Here, all those teams... San Antonio, yeah. small market. Detroit's not a huge market. I didn't say anything market. about small market. No, no, but I'm just saying, like, these, those teams, like, we just going to draft or make good And trade. I totally agree with you on that. But, but San, San Antonio had David Robinson and Tim Duncan. Yes. Detroit had Joe Dumars and Isaiah Thomas. Uh-huh. So it can happen in Oklahoma City. It can happen in San Antonio. My point is it's not the NFL where a team that's in last place can all of a sudden win the Super Bowl the next year. In the NBA, there's about 10 players in the league that are good enough to transcend everybody and 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 make their team a championship contender. There's only ten. But they all want to play with one another. And that and that's their right. They're free agents. So that means after you're going to have out of ten five, guys, seven years, but out whatever. of ten guys, that's three or four teams. Okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. The other no, but when, yeah, yeah, when you went to the NBA Finals, how many teams had a realistic chance of winning an NBA fi championship? Five or six. To, it's going to be five or six no matter what. And then you're going to have to grow in the draft like Oklahoma did. And there's, there's going to be teams that come up. In our era, the Milwaukee Bucks were one of those teams. But you have to... It's only every year going to be four or five teams that realistically have it a chance. It was a lot more. If you put and they a might be small together. market teams. They might be big market teams. Ernie, but not, not if you start putting super there, teams together. Ernie. Yes, yeah, last, no, like last word in this I like, segment. I like accidental or coincidental super teams. I don't like, you know, super teams that are forced. When you're in the prime of your career, you can't say, hey, even though I went to Lakers, I want to go play with C-Web. You can't do that. And with wrong. That. We didn't do it. The guys before us didn't do it. All the super teams that you guys are talking about were accidental or coincidental through drafts and through trades. Bad management. I'm not waiting on that. Not I'm forced. If I was not forced. Team, I'm going to get mine. And with that, <laughs> you're a greedy player, that, man. That, <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. Uh, and with that, we go to break. More open court. All about yours. Right around the bend. Oh, I'm going to get 11 other guys there, too. <laughs> Seven seconds are left. Barish out with the high screen. Here goes Kyrie. A spin to the paint. Bumped it over the left hand and he scores! Woo. Extra pass. Back to Ricky Rubio. Behind the back. Ricky Rubio. Hey, welcome back to Open Court. Um, we all, I assume, have League Pass, right? Got that on your television set, Kenny? Yeah. Okay, uh, good. And my computer. And it, uh, Very good. Uh, so, <laughs> on a night we're not working, and, and you've got League Pass on, who's the one guy? Who's the one guy you've got to watch? Who's your League Pass guy? Uh, Ashley and Fairness, I, I don't look at it like that. Oh, oh, that's no, because, because next question. Question. Hold on for a second. Let me make my point, Ernest. Ernest, we're please. trying to. Uh, like everybody, on. want to watch the great players. The number one thing I look at is it going to be a good game. I don't want to see a great player just maul a bad team. I kind of look like. Let me see a good game tonight. That's that's Ernie, that's what I look at. Okay. Okay. Ask the question again. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, who's your on a given night? Who's your league pass guy? Who's the one player you've got to see? There's a question. Answer it. I'm gonna go one with Blake player. Griffin. Why? He's a big man. He's exciting, and I like to see big men flourish. You know, imagine that. When we play, <laughs> strike two. <laughs> strike three. That's more than that's more than strike two. No, strike no, three. Check. On the air while the people are watching that strike two. Hey, how many Get days? Strike three. How many days did we work last year? 
20, we 25, or me? 30. No, I'm, how many nights did we work together? Uh, let's say 100. First, 100? Yeah, it seemed like. 98 times we heard, you got to get the ball to your big man. Let him flourish. <laughs> <laughs> Strike two and a half. <laughs> and also, <laughs> you either live by the jump shot or die by the jump shot. Exactly. And the Miami no, just, Heat are only going as far as LeBron James will carry it. Exactly. Okay, no, so uh, uh, who's the... The league pass guy you like to watch? Blake Griffin, like okay. I was saying before, I was really interrupted <laughs> by watermelon face over there. <laughs> so uh, I like to see big guys flourish because you know for many years this you know league has been has been taken over by guards. So you know me watching an exciting big man. Blake Griffin explodes on Gasol. That can run, finish, has swag, has style. Blake Griffin is my guy. Who's your guy, Reg? Well, if you're going by your question, I want to be entertained. And I like guys that can put the ball in the basket. Two come to mind. I love watching Kevin Durant, because I know he's going to get you buckets in a variety of ways. And Carmelo Anthony. Uh, sometimes he takes a lot of knock because he doesn't play at the other end. But I want to be entertained. And the way those two guys are able to put the ball in the basket and entertain me because they score in such a variety of ways, Carmelo and, and the Durantula. Do we not entertain you? <laughs> in this conversation, yeah. not really. Oh, for Smitty. <laughs> <laughs> I thought uh, we should queue up Gladiator now. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? <laughs> uh, for me, it's Kevin Durant. I think close second is Chris Paul. I mean, guys that I want to be entertained. Might not be the best player in the game as LeBron James, but if I'm going to turn on, me and my kids, we're going to watch Kevin Durant and Chris Paul. Mm. I, I, I go... When you're not watching old Kenny Smith highlights on. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's tough. Uh, yeah, I go on the school of thought of Charles first, so... Oh, I look up together. Does it taste long, like man. chicken? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. Does it taste like chicken? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just serious. It is. Some, some honey mustard right. with that chicken. Well, I asked a good question. Let me, let me a, say something real quick. I do look at it like that. Let me say something real quick. I'm not going to watch the bar and play against the... Hold on. Hold on. Let me say, you guys have picked out some wonderful furniture here, too. Yeah, That's exactly. really nice, you and, you and Charles. Oh, thank you. But, no, I get what he's saying. Uh, but we do. I, if it, everyone had good games, I, got you. I will take <laughs> I would take the game that he's, he was hurt last year. Derrick Rose was playing it. He was my favorite player to watch when he was playing, uh, when they were playing a good team. I'm not going to watch him against a scrub team. Kevin Durant and... Uh... And the Memphis big fellas playing together. I like watching uh, Casal and Zebo bang down there. So if those two guys are playing, or uh, Kevin Durant, I like watching play. Minnesota became my league pass team last year. <laughs> are you serious? I swear to God, Ricky, Ricky Rubio. Rubio and Kevin Love, watching them work together, and, and I love point guards. Cleveland was another team. You know, usually you're, we always have great games on TNT. So if there's a TNT game on, it's automatically a, a great matchup. But First of all, a, if a, we, we have a game on TNT, you working. The, the second one. You guys are working oh, both. Okay. You know, I'm going to work on the second one. But, you know, on a Tuesday night league pass, I'm picking out Kyrie Irving, Ricky Rubio, Chris Paul's another one. I mean, just point guards who control the action are fun to watch. And Charles, you're sticking by the compelling game is what gets you to the set. Well, you know, all these guys have great points. I mean, obviously, I want to watch Kevin Durant, LeBron, Chris Paul, a Blake, Blake play. But, but like I say, I, I, I want to see a good game, to be honest with you, Ernie. Uh, I do. That, that's to me. Because I, I don't want to see a great player and his team just maul a bad team. I want to see a good game. Uh, we're going to be back with more on, uh, on Open Court in, in just a moment. Who's your league pass guy? Please play it fast. Up and down. You run us, you run us, everybody runs. Work their tails off. Gentlemen, let's go win a big game. Win on three, please. One, two, three. Are we having fun yet? It's not supposed to be easy. Penetrate hard. Good passes. Shoot with confidence. I want some nasty. If Shaq play in Mexico, can we put it on NBA TV? <laughs> hey, Chuck, we might have to go NBA TV 2 for that. NBA <laughs> <laughs> TV 3. NBA TV 3. Let's strike two. Get the three. <laughs> Just going to open up an entire new network for it. <laughs> Actually, we probably can put that on 2 uh, TV. Yeah. <laughs> Anything you'd like to get off your chest just as we get things going today, Charles? I'm not playing in Mexico. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was rumors. <laughs> it's not going to happen. 
Welcome back with a reminder you can catch more open courts on NBA.com. This is kind of a lightning round. This is a short answer. You can give a little bit of an explanation, but it has Charles to be last pretty, pretty short. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What current coach would you like to play for, Shaq? I'm going to go with Greg Popovich. My original answer would be Doc Rivers, but I would play for Doc Rivers. I would like to play for uh, Coach Popovich because you look at his teams, you know, even though they had the, the, uh, a great big man, Tim Duncan, never really had a lot of super talent around him. But the way he gets those guys to gel together and win four championships, so my answer is Greg Popovich. Exactly the kind of, 22 time, seconds. Exactly the kind 22 of timing seconds. we're looking for. That was, that, that was exquisite. <laughs> Smitty. Doc Rivers for me. I think he's the one coach that I would love to play for. I think he played the game. He's been around the game. And the way he relates to players has to be Doc Rivers for me. Rich. We'll say yes and yes, but I'm going to throw another name out there. I love George Carl, especially for a shooter. To get out there, spread behind that arc, I'm going to say George Carl. Uh, and that's why I, I was going to say George Carl as well. I just think that he squeezes to me the most out of guys with Popovich that maybe just good players, he makes them a little bit better and great players, he continues to make them greater. I thought maybe you'd like to play for your old teammate, Scotty Brooks. Oh, uh, no. Nah. That would be interesting. We go ahead. go one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, um, I like uh, the fact you said George Carr, especially for a team, but I think personally, just in covering Doc Rivers last year, the way he just inspired guys on the team, it was like he still was playing out there. I think y'all showed up and think, we're the big bad Celtics, and they're just going to roll over. But they ain't going to roll over. You got to go get it. And that passion, and when I saw it, Doc Rivers just seemed like he'd be fun to play with and compete with. Steve. I played for Pop for four years, and I'd want to play for him again if I went back. Phenomenal coach. Every day is a challenge. Every day makes you work, but every day is fun. He's, he's an amazing coach. You can come back and play. Shaq going to come back and play. <laughs> Where next? Strike three. Right three. And, and the ever, and the, <laughs> the last answer belongs to the ever coachable Charles Barkley. You know what? I got to say, George Carl. I mean, obviously, I got great respect with Pop and Doc Rivers, but uh, George Carl, uh, his longevity, uh, I, I just going back to Seattle, playing against him in a couple of big series, I would love to play for George Carl. Wonderful answers to wrap it up for this edition of Open Court. We will see you again next time.